pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. May I have a motion to approve the agenda, please? I move that we approve the agenda as presented. Thank you. Is there support? Support. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. We'll begin with uh, new certified staff candidate introductions. And Ben, please. All right. Thank you. Mr. Arnett's not able to be here tonight, so I will go ahead and introduce uh, the two candidates that you'll be considering this evening. The first is here tonight, uh, Dorothy Roberts Johnston. And she is here, so thank you for being here. But she's being recommended for uh, Weber Elementary Art Teacher. She currently works at Oxford Virtual Academy, and she's also the owner of award-winning digital portrait studio, Johnston's Photography, Inc., uh, in Oxford. So she's earned a Bachelor's of Fine Arts and a Child Development Associate Certificate. So thank you for being here. And unable to be here tonight is uh, Crystal Boss, and Crystal will be teaching special education students at uh, Walden Middle School, um, and she has a Bachelor of Arts degree in English Education from Saginaw Valley State University, and she's currently a paraeducator at Orion Oak, so some of you may have heard of her name or uh, run across her previously. So uh, she is unable to be here, but if you would like to leave, you're more than welcome to. Um, so this is the part where you can take off. Bye-bye. Um, thank All you right. for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Great. More good news. Yeah. So move on to learning highlights and communication. And Mark, please. So I guess over here. Uh, should I move it'll over pick here? you up. Or should I move it? No. No, leave it there. Okay. Okay. No, that's fine. Um, thank you. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll start with uh, as we, we talked about at the last meeting that we're going to call this the Champions of Hope, staying with our theme throughout the year of all our staff members and kind of what they are meaning and doing for our students throughout the year. So uh, thank you for recognizing that. Um, okay. Uh, the Lamp of Learning. Uh, last night, you know, at the last meeting, we talked about the Lamp of Learning uh, ceremony for the high school and for Scripps Middle School, and then last night was Walden Oakview. A number of you were there, which was wonderful, and it, it's, it continues to be one of the great events, you know, in our district because it recognizes something. And this is, I was actually having a conversation with someone yesterday about how unique it is and that this is not something that happens in other districts, recognizing students from their middle school ages all the way through for academic achievement. And I think that that's something that, you know, we appreciate the board and I think that parents appreciate it too. I know that in the audience we have some parents who were there last night, so um, they, they understand that, you know, the value in that, so thank you. Um, this is National Principals Month, so you know, we recognized our principals. Um, it's, some, it's an opportunity really for, this month, it comes every year, but it's really something they, they put in far more hours than, you know, the contract calls for, and they're always on on call, as Mr. Noose uh, can attest. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it's great, and we, we really appreciate recognizing them. So hopefully everyone who's out there, you know, gives a thank you to their principals. And we're, we're sharing little fun facts um, about each principal throughout the month. And so we started with Mrs. Smith yesterday, Mrs. Colthals was today, and there will be more fun facts. And I think the principals don't know necessarily what the fun facts are that are coming about them. <laughs> so uh, that's part of the fun of it too. So we got our spies. Um, this is one of the high school classes, special education classes, you know, they went out and what they, this is yesterday, they went out and they experienced the great outdoors that around Lake Orion High School, they worked on sharing all the different things they saw with each of their classmates. So it gave them an opportunity to get out of the classroom, but also interact with each other and, and have some conversations and work on some of those skills. So that was, Eric Mearshart <laughs> shared this and it was, he's one of the special education teachers in the high school and it's really nice to uh, be able to see different ways that different people can learn. <clears throat> um, the English Learner Open House was held last night. This is obviously a very important you know, part of our district, uh, Carol Burke has taken over the program, the English Learner Program, and she's done a great job of trying to, you know, bring the community involved. And uh, this is, you know, it, it connects to a part of our community where they 
so they can understand more about our district and kind of the resources that we have available to their students and their families. So uh, that was really wonderful that she shared that. Uh, mountain biking is one of our teams that's really grown in the last couple years. And uh, they've had, and it goes all the way through the grades. And Nick Shaskos has really made a huge impact. Um, he's kind of taken this on, and he's very passionate about it. Uh, we got two pictures here. One was just from the weekend uh, where they're on the podium. That's in a field of 28 teams. The, mo the elementary mountain biking girls swept the podium one through five oh, wow. at the trail in <laughs> Grand Rapids. <laughs> So that was really exciting. Yeah. The other one, we used the picture because it was a photo finish. That's, and you can see that um, Sylvie Heist, a fourth grader, she beat out the, comp the competitor and it was to take fourth place and in the advanced elementary category. And you can see how close it was there in the mm -hmm. photo finish, which is, it was a pretty cool picture. So we wanted to yeah. kind of include that. Cool. Homecoming, obviously last week a lot of you participated and you saw all the different things that happened in homecoming. The assembly was outstanding. Uh, the parade was, was fabulous throughout the week. There was spirit and, you know, obviously we talk about all being dragons. And homecoming week, there's different spirit days at all the buildings and all the buildings get into it in their own way, which is really nice. And if you look in the bottom right corner, um, there is our the homecoming king and queen. Grace Sullivan is the young woman and the gentleman... Nick News. <laughs> <laughs> and Grace is oh, here. Grace is here. Oh, There's oh, Grace. Oh. Oh, Grace is here. Great. So yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, it was, it was a great night. Royalty. It was very exciting. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Grace was a fun. Yeah, it's really really fun. Okay. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. It was, yeah, it was great. And I think that the leadership class they do a great job of making it into a spectacle. There's uh, <laughs> they use the fire extinguishers for the <laughs> smoke and everything. It really framed Mr. Nuss's face nicely and everything. So it was great as they came out. Um, Blanche, we got a couple of Blanche Sims elementary things that have happened here that have been really cool. And, and so uh, it's a great night to be sharing them. They went on a visit through the village the other day. Um, and Ms. Stewart, Ms. Heck can probably talk about, um, it was, you guys went to, you want to share where you guys went? The police station, the fire station, and then um, we had different trail hikes we were committing near the Holy Land. Oh. Yeah. Beautiful. Awesome. We were thinking this last week or this week, it would have been today. And it, it was, we really lucked out last week. Um, so they learned a lot about the community in the past, and they got to see what some of the buildings used to be, the police station. Um, they got to learn some of, in the fire station, some of the services that the community provides for us. And that's something that, you know, as we've talked about the strategic plan and connecting with the community, you know, we, we make that a, a theme throughout all of our, all of these uh, Champions of Hope is that the, that connection, and that's really an opportunity for them that's taking advantage of being able to be in the village and be able to see all that stuff so the students learn. And so some of those things were challenging during COVID, right? So to be able to go back to that is, is great as well. Um, this is another thing. They had a mobile planetarium that came in. Um, and it, it looked looked pretty cool, like there was a, what a bubble in the gym and everything like that. Kind of. So uh, you know that that's a unique uh, in in school field trip cool. that is rare, cool. I guess, kind of for the students to have that experience. So that was that was cool. Stadium Drive had its fun run. Mr. Kirby wanted to run, but instead he just went down there to watch True. and take some pictures. <laughs> but um, they were trying to encourage him. Some of the teachers there were trying to encourage him to uh, run, but they, you know. They, they were, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> um, he was not being chased. I thought it was an oxymoron to say fun run. I don't right. know. <laughs> Obviously, it's one of the fundraisers of the, the year, witness. but um, Ms. Hines, the principal there, has really, really made it into something that ties in with their, now that they have the positivity project there. Each class took one of the character traits and made a banner for it, and so it, and they were all in the middle and they ran around the banner, so it really kind of connected to, to one of the themes for the school year, which was really nice. And all the teachers were there and they were wearing capes and everything with their, um, with the character trait of their class on it and everything. So that was really a great connection there as well. Um, this is coming this weekend. The robotics is having a girls only competition this weekend um, on the 15th. So that'll be 
a great opportunity. You know, the robotics continue, we talk about it all year, you know, and it continues to grow and everything. And this is uh, another opportunity to see another offshoot of the, the full team. They have different competitions. The bike and walk to school day. Today was supposed to be the bike and walk to school day, and with the weather, it didn't turn out the way in a lot of schools the way maybe that it hoped. But there was a there was two days designated, and one was last week. And Stadium Drive had taken advantage of that one last week, and they had a beautiful day. And they took also took advantage of being located on the Scripps campus, you know, there with all of the different things. So the high school band came over, and they were there to greet the students and everything and, the, and the, you can see the dragon was there and everything so a lot of connections and everything so there so they had a nice day <laughs> that was nice for them cool and then uh, school lunch week um, the governor's office had declared this just uh, in the last week that this would be school lunch week so uh, today you know uh, a number of school went around to a couple schools and saw you know them having lunch and it's an opportunity obviously to appreciate our food service staff and Monica Kaplan who leads that that group you know it's trying to find those people is always a challenge right John you know to fill all those spots but the people who they're very dedicated they want to and they understand the value and the importance of um, feeding the students and for their learn, learning and everything so it's uh, it's really great to have this opportunity to recognize and I know these weeks come up throughout the year and we are always highlighting this month and this week and everything but I think it is a great chance to put a spotlight on different parts of our staff and our in our uh, students that you know in a given week that we don't always highlight so any questions questions for Mark hmm. it was awesome great, great. thank, thank, you, thank you Mark great news let's move to our presentations oh, yeah. and uh, there you good should we rise for the queen? Say they're coming <laughs> and we'll begin with leadership. <laughs> you deserve it, Gracie. <laughs> yeah, so we, we have three students uh, from the leadership class. We have Cameron Smith and uh, Queen Sullivan and uh, uh, Reagan Haas. So appreciate you guys being here and, and giving us an update. Go ahead. All right. Um, so hello, I'm Cameron Smith. I'm the president of the leadership class. Um, today we're going to talk to you guys about the updates for October 12th, which is mostly entirely our homecoming week, which we have spent um, many weeks preparing and we are excited to share with you guys. Okay, so <laughs> um, these are all of our 10 committees that we had this quarter. Um, so we have Ella Lotto that run all of the spirit days and they hand out free prizes to kids who are wearing like the spirit gear. There's like a raffle. Then we have our advertising committee that does all of our posters and our advertising for all of our events. Our t-shirt sales committees um, sell all of our class t-shirts. Ticket sales, pretty self-explanatory. They sell our homecoming tickets um, and they design them too. They're be pictures later. Um, our homecoming parade committee planned the parade and um, yeah, and the routes and things like that. Activity night, I don't know if any of you know what activity night is. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yes, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I was just making sure. Um, but they'll each, we have each slide for one of these, but um, then we have powder puff, pep assembly, halftime, and the dance, so. All right, so here is just like kind of a little mini calendar of the Homecoming Week events. And our theme this year was homecom for Homecoming was a homecoming fit for God. So it was all like Greek God, Greek goddess themed. It was really cool, really unique theme. So on Sunday, we had the parade and activity night. Monday, we had a hypnotist come. It was really, really cool. He comes often, I think twice a year, and a lot of people show up for that. It's a really cool event. Thursday, we had the Powder Puff game. Friday, we had pep assembly during school, and then the football homecoming game, and Saturday, we had the dance. The dance, sorry. Um, so our wonderful advertising committee did create these signs above the Lake Orion High School doors. So as students were entering um, the building the week before homecoming, they got to see the breakdown of what each theme day was. Um, so Monday was dressed like Adam Sandler, loose clothing, basketball shorts. Tuesday was country versus country club, which is kind of a newer theme for Lake Orion. So you either dress like country, cowboy hats, cowboy boots, jeans, flannel, and country club is like you're going to go out for a golf setting, you know, one day. Um, Wednesday was dressed like a senior citizen day. Thursday was Jersey Day um, to commemorate uh, Potter Puff. And Friday was wear your class homecoming t-shirt day. 
Okay, so here are a couple pictures. <laughs> so all the way on the left, the um, two left pictures are Adam Sandler days. So as you can see, they were wearing like really loose, baggy clothing, backwards hats, hats sunglasses. Um, the middle two is country versus country club. So on the top, one of our students brought in a guitar. He was actually playing songs during passing time on his guitar. Yeah, it was really cool. And then on the bottom, um, we have some young ladies wearing their country club outfits. The top right is Tyler Ratliff in his grandma outfit. <laughs> so yeah, that day was really funny. Everyone was walking around. Some people had canes and walkers. It was really funny. And then the bottom right is is um, powder puff jerseys. This is um, Friday, which was homecoming class t-shirts. We had our seniors in the bottom right. It was a lightning bolt for Zeus. And then we had Poseidon top right for the juniors. And then is that Apollo for the sophomores? I think, I think. so. And it was like fire. And then the freshman is in the center. And then there's a picture of all of them in the top left. So this is our t-shirt sales and ticket sales slide. Um, on the top left, you can see that was our homecoming ticket, which the ticket sales committee designed. It was a wonderful ticket. We got to vote on it as a leadership class. Um, to the right is the ticket booth, which we the advertising committee designed that wonderful sign with the vine and stuff, getting ready to sell tickets for the homecoming week. Um, the bottom left picture were the backs of the t-shirt designs, you know, representing each class at the high school. Um, and then the homecoming t-shirt sales table during all lunches, that's Ryan Palachik, the chair of the committee, selling t-shirts in preparation. Um, we sold 1,560 homecoming tickets. Last year we sold 1,300 and that was the record for Lake Orion. So now we, we went over that record, which is an amazing accomplishment. We're very excited. And we sold 923 class t-shirts, which was awesome. Okay, so the homecoming parade. So um, this was a really nice event for the community. The whole community community participates and everyone comes and like watches. So it was really cool to see. I got to ride on a convertible, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the top left is our committee that planned the event. Um, and then Mrs. Hogan and Mrs. Redmond are in the um, middle picture on the top. And our Hoko court on the top right. So I'm in that picture. <laughs> and then the bottom right is just a couple of our LD Dub mems um, at the parade. So yeah, that was a lot of fun. These are pictures from activity night. We um, This year included a teacher's team, which we haven't had before, so that was really fun. Each grade competes with each other, and then having teachers compete this year was also really cool. We have usually a lot of people come and watch. They make posters for their grades. It's really fun. It's not something that a lot of places do either, and it's a great way right after the parade to like kickstart the week, and the seniors won. Yeah. It's all that matters, guys. Seniors won. <laughs> Um, so Wednesday was our annual hypnotist show. Um, we The hypnotist comes usually twice a year, and they bring up a new group of students. Some of them have done it before, so they kind of know what to expect. Um, but tickets were $5 on a Wednesday night at 7 p.m., and students could come in and watch their classmates do crazy funny things on stage. <laughs> um, I really recommend coming in the future because it really is quite a yeah, sight to watch. It's, it's, <laughs> it's really, really funny. funny. <laughs> Like some students were stealing people's shoes. And yeah, it was. Okay, so Thursday was our powder puff game. Again, the seniors won 27 to 7. So um, our juniors were pink and white, and they were on the left. And then our seniors were um, blue and black. And it was a really fun event. And we had a lot of people show up to support their grade, which was really fun. And even the underclassmen came um, to support. Support the seniors. Yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was very competitive. Um, but it was all safe, so yeah. <laughs> And then during class on Friday, after fourth hour, we had the pep assembly um, put together by the pep assembly committee. It was very fun. We had cheer and dance perform. We had some games. Um, the game in the bottom left was a chariot race to kind of go with our Greek awesome. God theme. We got like basically <coughs> wheelbarrows, and then you put someone inside and pull them across the, the gym. It was really, really fun to watch. Fun to watch them get dumped at the end. <laughs> Um, and yeah, it was just really, really hype. A lot of people, well, obviously everyone was there and getting loud for 
of their classmates. Now for our Friday night football game against Clarkston, uh, we had a you know rough first start you know during through halftime and everything, but unfortunately we did lose. Um, but moving on to the Friday night football, uh, um, in the middle are Paint Up Boys. Leadership pays for a professional body paint artist every year to um, paint up the Paint Up Boys um, professionally, so they look like statues, you know, all in the gray. Um, they had like even fake cracks and stuff, like you know old pillars. Um, on the top left is our king and queen um, <laughs> of homecoming. <laughs> the second image on the left is our um, king and queen again, but the returning king and queen also rode on that convertible pulling around um, in front of the stands. There are paint-up boys in action right in front of the student section. Um, and there's our marching band playing um, during the football game. Um, overall, it was a wonderful night. I've never seen the student body get so hyped. Um, they brought a speaker up in the student <laughs> section, and it was basically a rager in the student <laughs> section. It was awesome to witness that. Um, and hopefully, we'll continue that tradition um, into future years. OK, and then lastly, our dance. So um, <laughs> there's Cameron and Aubrey. <laughs> um, so we got these huge pillars and um, to go with the Greek god theme. Um, and we put those around our gym. The bottom um, right is our gym decoration. So we had Patty the Balloon Lady come, and she put up all of those balloons. Um, we came in Sunday or Saturday morning and set this all up for like four hours. Um, and then in the bottom left is our aux gym. So we serve pizza, and there's water in there for any students who want to go up there. We also have a gaming truck outside of the pool <laughs> lobby. So if any kids want to go in there and play video games, they can. And a lot of students love it. Like, we always hear that it's amazing every single year. The top right is actually during our dance. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of people go, as we said, the most that we've ever had. So it was really cool. And yeah, our DJ was really amazing too. <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Questions? Any questions? Yeah. Great awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. you guys did a great job. Just impressive the level of organization to cover that entire week in yeah. in such depth like that. That's yeah, and we were it's even really well done. Cut short a week this year yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, it was so early homecoming. Right. Yeah. Pulled really packed, but we got it all done. Well done. So it's the first time I've ever seen that it called the Adam Sandler Day, but it looks like. 90s in high school. Right. Right. <laughs> right. right. Like, you guys are all laughing, like, that's what we look like. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully Saturdays. you thought they looked cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very guys. much. Thank you. All right. Always good news from leadership. So move to uh, other presentation tonight, Blanche Sims Elementary. We're we're glad to see you. Yes, we have a, a number of superstars here tonight. Uh, we have Mr. Noose and uh, Mrs. Stewart and Mrs. Heck, and they have uh, some other superstar students, and they're going to talk about student council. So thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. Uh, before I get talking about uh, Blanche Sims and the student council, I just want to do another shout out to the leadership uh, and Lori Hogan. You know, I had a senior son, obviously, this year, and uh, I went to a lot of those events. And it's amazing. Like you mentioned, the organization, uh, it's just tremendous how flawlessly everything ran and uh, how much work those leadership kids uh, and Lori must put into it is just amazing. And you mentioned Adam Sandler Day, reminding of you when you were in high school. I was a little concerned because a lot of the, uh, was it the elderly day was the stuff that I wear. <laughs> so, I was a little concerned about this. I don't know. Anyway. Dad, can I get in your closet? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I raided my closet for yeah. it. So. Anyway, we really thank you for this opportunity to say a few um, uh, exciting, what some of the exciting things that we're doing at Blanche Sims. The hardest part is kind of narrowing it down what we wanted to talk about. One of the greatest things about Blanche Sims, we always say that it's a, it's a special place and it really is. Um, but it's for so many reasons. Um, uh, I think Mark mentioned how we're the only downtown schools. So we have that relationship with downtown, whether it's walking field trips uh, and the relationship with the police department, the fire department, uh, and all the businesses there, you know, that makes it really special. But I will tell you, our staff is second to none. Uh, I should say all the Lake Orion schools are fantastic, but I'm a little biased toward Blanche Sims. It really is that community school with an exceptional staff and 
exceptional PTO that makes a lot of the things happen, like the planetarium that you saw uh, brought to us by our PTO. It really is a community uh, of everyone working together to make uh, learning and the school a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, and we talk about uh, champions of hope. That's from a staff and a parent's point of view, but also from a student point of view. And the students that you have behind us are certainly our champions of hope at Blanchens Elementary, you know, student to student and even student to staff. Uh, this is uh, the, the students you're gonna be hearing from today are, are representative of our student council. Our student council is actually much larger, but they are led by second grade teachers, Jennifer Heck and Jackie Stewart. And I'm gonna turn it over to them because I'm sure you'd rather hear more from them about what's exciting and what's going on in our school. Hello, I am Jackie Stewart and I am not going to talk much today, but I just wanted to say that we, as a student council at Blanche Sims, we really teach the kids how to be leaders as well as give back to our community. So tonight you will hear from Samantha, a second grade student, Aiden, a third grade student, um, Violet, a fourth grade student, and Grayson, a fifth grade student. So we will start with Samantha. Hello, my name is Samantha, and I am in second grade. Student council is made up through second through fifth graders in our school. Students who are interested in running for student council must fill out a application explaining why they would make a great student council representative. We are our, we are p speeches to our p class and our peers vote for who they would like to elect the student with the top two votes in each classroom. Our chosen student council meets once every month. Great job. Hello, my name is Aiden. I am in third grade. Student Council partners with the Lions Club around the holidays to hold a canned food drive at our school. The class who brings in the most food wins a class prize, usually a movie and popcorn. Every year, the Lions Club is blown away by the generosity of Branch Sims Student Council. Also plans to spirit days for our school to show our dragon pride. Usually, we do spirit days a few times a year. Last week, we just finished our spirit days to support the Lake Orion Homecoming. Some of our favorite spirit days are PJ Day, Twin Day, Hat Day, and Green and White Day. It is a great time for other students to be open-minded and try new things. Thank you for listening. Great job. Uh, <laughs> Hi, my name is Violet. I'm in fourth grade. Each year in February, around Valentine's Day, Student Council runs a candy gram sale. This is where students, staff, and family members um, can send a sweet treat and a note to students in our school. The money we raise um, gets used to help various people outside of our school. Last year, we partnered with a local church and provided bags for the homeless. Each bag contained toiletries, socks, hats, and other necess necessities. We try we were able to make 40 bags to help the less fortunate. Nice job. All right, so at the beginning, uh, you heard Miss Stewart say that she wasn't going to talk much. I am going to talk much, because I was given permission to funny lines. Um, uh, I like to break tension in rooms, and I see that that's already happened, so I'll just add to it. Um, <laughs> Before the meet, uh, before the meeting, uh, I was told to uh, work on my Australian accent so I could present it to the board, and I got a dollar. What was it, Mr. News? Was it like a dollar every time I said? <laughs> was it like a dollar every time I said the word mate? I don't know. Uh, or um, anyway, uh, I was expecting a table, not like the Judge Judy show. <laughs> I was told uh, that it was better because there were seven people instead of just one. Um, 
and I was, uh, I had to practice this many times at home because um, I had to make it uh, available for the people in the cheap seats to hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Hi, my name is Grayson and I am in fifth grade. Another one of our favorite student council acts of service is to adopt an endangered animal or two. In the past, we have adopted monkeys, owls, tigers, penguins, turtles, and more. You can see stuffed animals as <clears throat> well as a certificate for each animal that we have adopted displayed in the main office of our school. Last, uh, I shouldn't have read the last, sorry, that's just on the paper. I didn't read this, I didn't write this. Uh, <laughs> other ways that we have helped our community and school has been to donate to Oxford teachers and students to purchase items from their classroom wish lists. We keep our school clean and help teachers with projects that they could use extra hands with. Blanche Sims is a wonderful place with many wonderful leaders and people. And I feel blessed um, and lucky to be in the Blanche Sims student council and family. Now, if you excuse me, a cookie is awaiting me on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Line. Do you guys have any questions? I have to <laughs> well, cookies were important, so it's good that you it's focused okay. on. <laughs> exactly. Great job, Grayson. All right, thank you. Thank Excellent. you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you. Oh. Well, I want to thank our leaders. student council, and I, I thought we screened the kids before we <laughs> <laughs> chat with that. But oh, thank you. Thank you. that was perfect. Um, that was awesome. That's I do want to mention one other thing about our school because it's such a big part of our school, and that is the Positivity Project. This year, everything we do is through the lens of the Positivity Project, uh, and the students are learning the 24 character strengths. Uh, we're still working on them, as you can see, uh, but uh, uh, no, uh, the kids are really embodying them, uh, and it's really making our school a more positive place. It always was, but we can always uh, take things to the next level, so thank you. Thanks, Thank Thanks. you very Thanks. much. I see future leaders out there. Right? Well, <laughs> leaders right now. We, well, true. Right. We, 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 we can see that uh, our Hurt. leaders are not limited to the high school. Right. right. Thank you, all of you. Great job. Thank you very much for being here. Yes, thank you. And all the parents. Yes. yes thank you so much. Grab a cookie on the way out. Yeah. Grab your cookies. Get them, Grayson. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for bringing everybody in. Yes, you guys are great. Thank you so much. Oh. Kelly, you can grab one. Yeah, take them all. We're not. We don't need them. No, we don't have the cookies. Thank you. They were all great. Mr. Noose, you can leave too if you'd like. Okay. Or get a cookie. <laughs> Just didn't want you to feel obligated. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> waiting for the line to die down. <laughs> All right, great job. I'm looking forward to the uh, our, our other presentations too. There. Set the bar that, pretty high. That, I was just going to say that, that bar is going to be a challenge. <laughs> All right, amazing. So there is no public participation for uh, items uh, on the agenda. We'll move to strategic area discussion items and governance. And Ben, please. Okay, thank you. I, I do have a number of things I wanted to share uh, tonight. And the first one is uh, not necessarily a legislative update, but it is uh, uh, political in nature around legislation and, and uh, education opportunity for our students. But uh, Vice President Harris will be in Oakland County this Saturday. Uh, and it's an opportunity, to, it's a civ civic engagement opportunity uh, for our young voters. And that's uh, Saturday, really the, the audience is high school juniors and, and seniors and uh, teachers, but those students that are getting ready to vote, just like what their, you know, um, their civic duties and, and so on um, about voting, but that is uh, Saturday, October 15th, and that's at Southfield High School uh, for the arts and technology. So that's an opportunity for students um, but it is emphasized that it's an education event. So 
just wanted to share that. Um, the other is that the, the legislature is on recess basically until after the election. Uh, we've talked about that a little bit. I've also mentioned the supplemental spending bill, um, but just wanted to recognize that within that, as far as affecting schools, there's uh, 12 point, uh, $2 million for a literacy tutoring program and a robotics program in case you hear you know, uh, more information about that, but just uh, just to be aware of that. There is a scholarship program uh, for high school graduates beginning the class of 2023 uh, for those that uh, attend a Michigan uh, public community college or university. Uh, in essence, it's about $5,500 per student. Um, I do believe you still have to fill out the FAFSA and, and do those things and there's qualifications and things like that. So um, just wanted to share that. Shortly after the supplemental uh, bill was signed, um, Representative Thomas Albert resigned uh, and uh, basically he was, the, he was the chair of the House Appropriations Committee, but he had some disagreements with that. But just to be aware, you know, that that was uh, an action that took place after the, after, um, the approval. He resigned from the committee? Yes, okay. yes, yeah, I'm sorry. He resigned from his post as the chair, mm -hmm. yep. Uh, and then House Bill uh, 5703 or 03, um, that then heads to the governor, which requires certain sections of the Michigan Constitution and the revised school code to be posted in easily accessible areas of a school building. So you may want to look at, I, I can read what they are if you want me to, but um, you, you can uh, take a look at that, but it's House Bill 5703, and I can put it in an update so that you have that, but again, it's House Bill 5703. Um, but it's a little bit interesting that that's something that has um, moved through the process uh, to obligate schools to publish. Is there a particular place? Uh, it'll come out in the um, uh, all the guidelines, but basically it says posted uh, within the school buildings in an easily accessible area. So uh, more to come on that, I'm sure, but that was something that, that had moved through the process. And then House Bill 5501 uh, passed, um, passed as well, and that will allow a school district to equip school buses with a stop arm camera system. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that people were aware of that. Um, also, the House Rules and Competitiveness Committee, um, chaired by Representative Julie Calley, uh, hosted a presentation uh, from the House School Safety Task Force. Um, and I actually did watch that online. Uh, but they basically talked about what the School uh, Safety Task Force um, is has been doing. Uh, they talked a little bit about the 14-bill uh, package that was... Um, you know, working its way through the process in the month of June. They've yet to release a final report, but they are they were encouraged through that process to have that final report completed prior to it being voted on. And it was it was kind of interesting because it didn't really seem like that was going to be something that was going to take place. But they they were urged to get that final report before um, all the legislators voted on it, which seems to be pretty essential. Um, but that was interesting. So. Just wanted to share those items. Any questions on any of that? Okay, we're good? I think you're good. All right. Then I have the next one as well. Um, we are going to, uh, we've asked you to consider uh, some donations uh, that are on the agenda, and I can approve up to $10,000, but this is, you know, pretty significant, and I wanted to bring it to the board for uh, board acknowledgement, recognition, and approval. Uh, but Dragon alumni Tim Myers uh, from the class of 1984, as you all know, was recognized uh, as the uh, most recent inductee of the um, high school wall of excellence. He's the CEO of the Arconic Corporation, um, and and they basically supply aluminum products uh, in various sectors uh, across the world. Um, he did come in uh, during that ceremony uh, and he uh, spoke to our students. It was really a, a great day for our students and, and he really loved being here. Uh, but he did participate in the ceremony and I think you saw uh, in the past, uh, he was part of the halftime uh, celebration. Um, but he encouraged our uh, high school to apply for a $10,000 Arconic Foundation grant, which we did get, uh, and that's uh, before you tonight for approval. And then that was uh, to be spent on our engineering and robotics programs. 
And then he turned around and matched that $10,000, so we got an additional $10,000, uh, and he wrote a personal check to the district for, uh, again, $10,000, and that is an unrestricted donation, um, but his desire is that it's uh, part of funding to directly support STEM programming at the high school. So that's the history behind those uh, couple of grants that we're asking you to approve tonight. Very nice. Yes, it was very generous, and uh, we're very thankful. Great add to the wall. Yes. Yep. Yep. Questions? All right. Is that something that we have to take action on as far as specifying where that money's going, or we just understand that it's going to go hand in hand with that other 10 grant? Is that the. So, as far as the, um, the actual spending of it, so we will take care of where it. I mean, John will obviously take it in, and then the, the high school will spend it accordingly. Awesome. Um, and they'll be, they'll be able to. Um, steer it towards the STEM program like he's asking. Great. That shouldn't be an issue. Great. Other questions? All right. Thank you. So we'll move to uh, student achievement. And Heidi, please. All right. Good evening. Okay. Uh, Parent University will be starting this month. Uh, our first session uh, will be an early literacy make and take that is actually on October 26th at Orient Oaks. It's for any parent who has students in grades K and 1. And our instructional coaches have started doing labs uh, again this week. Uh, we had Beth Bruce hosted a first grade lab um, for lower elementary teachers and launching a reader's workshop. Andrea Mady hosted a lab uh, for first year upper elementary teachers on launching workshop. Kelly Day is hosting a lab actually tomorrow for new middle school uh, ELA teachers on introduction to workshop with a mini lesson focus. And then NGSX training uh, for science has also uh, begun again this year and we are focusing on getting first grade teachers trained. If you remember uh, pre-COVID, it was part of our mission to make sure that all of our teachers, uh, elementary, middle, and high school, were trained through the Oakland Schools NGSX training. So that has started again. So we have kept track of those that were trained and all of our teachers that have yet to be trained. So we are starting that again. So we're Bring excited about that. Uh, yes, we do have a few sessions that are here. Yes. Awesome. And then uh, last week we had a uh, PD day, elementary rolled out the revised um, MTSS process, which um, you actually spoke to uh, the last board meeting. And then middle school worked on revising the report card uh, language. And so that work will continue as well. Our SABERS um, is being administered at the elementary and middle levels through next week. Uh, buildings will use that data to create our social emotional learning plans. Um, there was a parent opt out um, that was provided before the Sabres window opened at all levels. And then we have buildings are beginning to submit their proposals for additional academic support outside of school hours. And some of those programs will begin next week with the entire middle level uh, programming beginning next week. So we are excited about that as well. And then as Mark had pointed out, um, you know, our EL open house um, that took place yesterday, um, our numbers did double. Um, and so that was really a great event. And they are actually planning another one in January. And they're gonna incorporate some of the feedback that they receive from parents and, and another event um, will take place in January. So we look forward to that. <clears throat> and then moving on to bond. Okay, well, um, I do have some notes here. Okay, well, I'll go through with these two. But uh, today was a bond uh, meeting day. Uh, we are excited that we've had some back and forth regarding the high school sign. And so um, we are making progress on that. Um, we are hoping that the high school sign uh, will be up around spring slash summer. So uh, more to come on that, but that has been a work in progress. And so things are actually starting to move regarding that. 
Heidi, where is that going to be located? The same place that it is now, which was part of the, the issue. Yes. Right, because it wasn't supposed to technically be there or something. The state yeah. yeah, there's issues. been a lot yeah. of back and forth, but. That's been like well, five the years. saga continues. Yes, but long story short, right, John? Too late. Um, <laughs> we saw it through, and that's and where so it, that's we where do it get to right. have, it's going to be the similar sign as to what's at all the other Electron. schools? Yep. It will, ma yes, it will match. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are very excited about that. So uh, we didn't give up because that's where we really wanted it. So that will be happening. Um, Oakview, Pine Tree, and Walden signs are now up and running. So that is good news. I think the last time that I reported, they didn't uh, quite have uh, electric to them, but now they do. And then uh, October 26th at 4.45, you all got an invite, uh, will be our first tour of Blanche Sims. So bring your hard hats. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we will have a tour of Blanche Sims thus far. And uh, tomorrow at Scripps, uh, we will begin to pour concrete, which is exciting. Um, and things are moving along there right on schedule. There are scripts right there. So, both um, the projects for Scripps and Blanche Sims are really going well. They're on um, schedule and so making progress. So, we're very excited about that. But tomorrow is going to be an exciting day because, as I said, um, some additional steel is going in as well as concrete. So, um, we're excited about that. And I believe that is it. Okay. Bond questions for Heidi. Great job, Heidi. Okay. Thank Thanks you. for the information. Thank, Thank you. you very much. All right. So we'll move ahead to um, human resources, and uh, Ben will be sitting in tonight. Yeah. The only uh, the only item will be the two uh, that we introduced earlier in the certified new staff hire. Unless you have any questions, the information is within your packet to the qualification. <coughs> Great. Thank you. Okay. Move to finance and Jen, please. Good evening. Uh, there's uh, three items uh, of note on the agenda. Um, two require action and uh, one's an informational piece. The first one is a furniture bid uh, that's before you. It's furniture for Stadium Elementary. There's STEM room and media center. They're being recommended based on purchasing that we ex uh, utilize from existing cooperative contracts as recommended through our plant, plant Moran design team, our oversight uh, tech, not, uh, excuse me, <coughs> plant Moran or GMB design team. I'm sorry on that one. Um, mixing my next one up with that one. Um, so funding is going to be provided through the bond series two issuance proceeds. Um, it is uh, recommended that the Board of Education authorize the administration to execute contracts as presented to purchase furniture from Great Lakes Furniture Supply in the amount of $12,256. Interior environments in the amount of $9,277.33. Duel Corporation in the amount of $4,384.52. Custer Incorporated in the amount of $31,744.44. And a withholding of a 10% contingency in the amount of $5,766.23 for a total award of $63,428.52. Any questions on the, on the furniture? Very similar to what we just had through last month. Right. Um, and the next one is also quite similar to our, a recent one. These are student staff device procurement. Um, the purchasing will be done using our preferred vendor CI pricing, computer pricing based on their cooperative pricing um, contract. The procurement is for 600 student laptops. That's uh, at a total of $444,600. And 15 teacher laptops at $15,795. Funding for the procurement is provided uh, by the uh, Series 2 bond funding. It is recommended uh, uh, recommendation of the administration that the Board of Education authorize mm -hmm. the administration to purchase devices from CHI uh, not to exceed $457,395 as presented. Any questions on the devices? Looks good. Thank you. Um, the third item is a discussion point. Um, as you know, we have the property over on Clarkston Road. Um, we have been approached to place a cell tower 
on that property. Um, so I want to give you and that contract, uh, that proposed contract that was in the board packet. I will go over some highlights on that and be more than happy to answer any questions. Um, so again, the site locations will be on that property off of Clarkson Road there. The, uh, the contract as negotiated and presented, um, it's a lease contract between Lake Orion and an organization by the name of Tower Co. 2013 LLC. Uh, the main client will be a, a Verizon Tower um, attachment. Uh, the initial term is proposed at 10 years with m multiple, really four, five-year renewal terms. And the tower placement itself um, will be placed in the high ground in the northeast area. If you picture in your mind the, the shape of the property over there, it's uh, up northeast and there's an actual pretty visible high ground point that when you, if you walk the property, it's pretty self-evident. It'll be placed in that area. There will be an access road um, built through. Our, uh, our ideal access road and the surface of it was to try to hug the eastern boundary as much as we could. As um, the, the uh, Tower Co. got into more looking at what's out there, there is a number of trees along that boundary line that uh, work, uh, working with us, we've decided to shift the actual access road a little more to the west to preserve those trees. Roughly, roughly 75 trees would be um, spared awesome. by doing a small move. Um, and in terms of uh, or, or Oakland Township too has a pretty strong tree regulation and mm -hmm. they'll be very happy to see that um, things in that nature are being applied to this, this process and um, without unnecessary, unnecessarily taking trees down. Mm -hmm. um, from, an, from a revenue or from an economic value per, per, perspective for the district, um, the option, option E fee um, is $3,500, that's a fee right up front if uh, the second the, the um, organization decides, Tower, Tower Co. decides to pursue, that's paid up front. Um, the purpose of it is really uh, to allow them to go in, do site testing, design uh, surveys if they need it up front, um, groundwork, and then start and complete all of their compliance work through the states and at some point with the township. And then if that takes longer, this, this actual first period of option E period that they're buying for $3,500 lasts a year if they need more time, successive six month ones will be attached for another additional $1,000 per, per period. Once that occurs and we move from option and testing and deciding and they actually put a shovel in the ground then it flips to a traditional lease format. So the funding related to the to this uh, agreement um, for the district's perspective is a monthly rent based or a, a, uh, in the amount of $1,850 per month. There's a built-in 2% escalator, so each annual year there's an automatic increase in the value. 2% um, was the going rate at the initial times, but uh, this, this contract's actually been worked on for maybe, I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten months now. Yeah. So inflation's a little higher at the moment, so we're anticipating and hoping that it gets back to a more manageable range so the inflator will eventually do its job. Um, so part of the process too is once they start the build work, they will securitize the first 10 years of rent value mm -hmm. and pay upfront 10 years worth of rent to the district in the amount of $222,000. Um, subsequent uh, rently payments after the first 10 year period will begin on a, again on a monthly basis and they will start at $2,255 a month and then again each year going up 2% from there. Um, there's also the opportunity for additional co-locators to be added to the new tower, and there's, there's including Verizon, there's four big players left in the cell tower, um, cell tower industry. Um, so there's potential for adding three more units on there. Each one would be $600 per month. They're competent, tower co's competent, they can get all three, but from our planning perspective, we're thinking one would be rent fairly soon, fairly, in a, in a fairly good, um, a reasonable um, acquisition, at least in the first year of the process. So that will also continue a continuous monthly uh, income stream from, from the site. So just a quick overview for the whole process, uh, using the fr phrases like option E and option OR and less OR and le less E. So the, in the big picture, there's really two stages to the, to the process here. The first stage is where the, where the district is the option OR, granting the right to Verizon and Tower Co to go out and look at the property, test it and do their preliminary work and get through the illegal compliance pieces. Once that's all executed, it flips into a traditional uh, leasing lessor um, approach, and that's where the bulk of the language of the agreement that's in, in the uh, board packet covers. Um, so that, uh, and that's when the um, lease language in the back end governs the whole relationship at that point. Um, I would be more than happy to address any questions or, or thoughts or concerns. Questions for John. 
I have one question. Thanks, John, this is awesome. Um, as far as if we ever wanna build anything on that or in 40 years we need to build something on that, does this handcuff us at all as opposed to, like do we look at, if we were gonna build a school here, kinda where that would go and then determine where the cell tower is from that? I mean, I notice it's kinda pushed back in the corner, so. We do, we do have the legal rights in the, uh, in the contract to have them move it for just scenario, that scenario. Okay. The costs involved we'd be carrying as a district if we want them to move it, but that's understandable. But we do have that ability to reshape if we need it for our own further construction. And then also um, the additional carriers that you were talking about, Total does that carrier. go on the same structure or it's, it's just same additional structure. banks, right? It'll be same okay. structure the next year. By the, I, I failed to mention this too, the style is the monopole style. So particularly with all the trees that are gonna be left on the property with the style of that build, it'll be much more of a blend in versus the, the, the more old school kind of A-shaped towers and those kinds of things. <clears throat> they didn't go for the tree one? No, there's, there's some pros and cons to those. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I read up on them too. They just look cool. <laughs> they look cool. Other questions for John? Thanks, John. John, I, I did have a question. Could you review the terms of it? It's a tenure Yeah, it's a, an initial term of 10 years with four options, uh, optional uh, renewal periods after that, each period five years. So the, um, the, the entire, entire time frame is 30 years. There is a termination language and if we wanted to get out, if they wanted to get out and all the, some fairly customary language and, and items included in the lease. So um, if for, let's say there was a, a specific building that we really wanted to go with and it required us to totally remove the tower in 20 years or whatever, there's, there's language that we can um, do that in as well as opting out of the lease itself, so. And how does the uh, payment arrangement go beyond the initial payment? So there'll be for, for the, f once the shovels hit the ground, so and roughly it can take anywhere from one year to two years to get to that point, depends upon, depends upon how testing goes, right. compliance processes and and then you know you never know what Oakland red tape you're gonna, I, okay, it was, I'll yeah, say Oakland, it. okay Oakland Township um, they do have a working relationship with Oakland Township so so they think they'll be fairly uh, they have to welcome eligible. it yeah because of the service out there yeah I was gonna say we do I mean from our perspective like we got the school out there that should support the service there right well. but um, and in saying that I've uh, could you refresh my memory on your question there what you just asked me about the um, Payments beyond the initial payment. Okay, so the first, the initial payment up front covers Verizon's first 10 years. Any co-locators that occur, they will continue, they will start that moment when they sign on right. and continue forward. And then after, at year 11, um, if everything's going well, then we roll into a renewal of the first five, first five year time frame. The amount, the monthly amount at that time in year, year 11 increases to $2,255 per month. So it'll be a per month lease payment again, and then each year thereafter it will be um, increased by another 2% the monthly payment. Is there any potential for reopeners on negotiating the rate? Um, there's nothing written in it, but there's nothing that says we couldn't write something in it as we get into renewal periods. I think with uh, the escalation of, uh, of uh, inflation and so on, we mm -hmm. might find ourselves uh, giving them a bargain down the road if, if we don't have that op option to take, at least take a look at it and have a conversation. Okay. Okay. Other questions for John? All right, thank you, John. <coughs> thank you. So we'll move to uh, Finance Committee and Jake, please. Yeah, so we had a Finance Committee meeting on Monday. Uh, the first topic was uh, the year end fiscal year 2022 update and the audit has completed and the, uh, I don't have the exact number in front of me, but the surplus for the year was about 125,000, which was a little over 200,000 lower than the surplus we had budgeted, but you know, still within a quarter percent of the uh, total revenue and expenditures. So when you're dealing with a $94 million budget, it, it is practically uh, a number that's within a, a reasonable variance from a finance perspective. And we discussed, uh, you know, going forward, 
you know, the, what the goals were uh, to keep, you know, the, uh, the surplus, the annual surplus at about the rate that we had budgeted for, for that year. So uh, the second thing we talked about was the uh, cell tower. So what, what John presented there, we, we talked about it in a little bit more detail. And the third thing was a shared time uh, services update. And that is a program where uh, we provide services uh, to, are they charter schools? Or what, what is the parochial, parochial and private, private schools? Yeah. So where we uh, can draw in uh, full-time equivalent funding uh, for providing <coughs> services to those programs. And uh, we've been building up the number of FTEs uh, that, that, that we are getting uh, money for from the state. We will be up to over 200 with a goal of eventually reaching a 5% of our student count, which is the limit allowed by the state. That program is, is bringing in almost $2 million and a profit to the district of about $600,000. So getting into that program is uh, a very good financial because that, that profit is money that we can drive back into the direct programming of our own district. And then we also talked about um, the future needs for the non-homestead renewal millage and the sinking fund millage, but those are a few years out. We just wanted to, uh, they just gave us an update on uh, that, we're, that we expect to be uh, no issues collecting those monies until a, a future election hmm. would come around no earlier than 2024. Okay, great, thank you. Questions for Jake, please. Well said, Jake. Uh, Thanks, Jake. I appreciate Jake explaining it, uh, because it was confusing to me, uh, Mr. Singer, as to the sinking fund coming up, but like you said, we have plenty of time to mull it over and review it and study it. Thank you, Jake. Great. Others? All right, thank you, Jake. I appreciate it. Let's move to... Uh, Action items, and uh, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, please? I move that we approve the following consent agenda items. Approve payment of the September bills in the amount of $8,628,516.57. Also approve minutes from the September 28th regular, September 28th superintendent evaluation committee, and October 5th, 2022, special and closed session meetings, and also approving the Head Start Coordinator's report. Great, thank you, is there support? Support. Thank you, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, thank you very much. The consent agenda is approved. We have a motion to approve certified new hires, please. I move to approve two certified new hires as presented. Thank you, is there support? Support. Thank you, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The certified new hires are approved. And Jake? Welcome to Crystal and Dorothy. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. All right. Welcome. We have a motion to authorize Stadium Drive STEM and Media Center Furniture Bid Award. I move to authorize administration to execute contracts to purchase furniture from Great Lake Furniture Supply in the amount of $12,256, interior environments in the amount of $9,277.33, Duell Corporation in the amount of $4,384.52, and Custer Inc. in the amount of $31,744.44 and allocate $5,766.23 as a 10% contingency for a total award of $63,428.52 as presented. Thank you, is there support? Support. Thank you, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. The uh, stadium, stadium Drive STEM and Media Center Furniture Bid Award is authorized. May I have a motion to authorize Technology Bid Award? 
I move that we authorize administration to purchase student and teacher laptops from Sahi Computer Products Incorporated not to exceed $457,395 as presented. Thank you, is there support? Support. Thank you, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, thank you very much. Technology bid award is authorized. May I have a motion to accept Lake Orion High School STEM program grant and donation? <coughs> I move to accept a $10,000 grant from the Arconic Foundation and a $10,000 monetary donation from Mr. Tim Myers for the Lake Orion High School STEM program to support engineering and robotic, robotics equipment needs. Thank you. Is there support? Support. support. Thank all you. Of all of us. There's a lot of support for that. Yeah. Right, a lot of support. <laughs> all right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Myers. Yeah, yes. for sure. Beautiful. Uh, this is... This is a great thing because it models to other people who have an interest in programs that this is an opportunity that they can take advantage of as well to, to uh, direct support to a particular program that is in need of ongoing support. So Absolutely. it's a great thing. Sets an and, example, uh, Jim. It's greater than the gift itself. It's modeling of what can be thank done. You. So thank you to Mr. Tim Myers. So we'll move on to public participation for other non-action items and topics. And we have one uh, person who signed up this evening. And Jake, if you would be so kind. Yes. Uh, welcome to the Lake Orion Community School District Board of Education meeting. This meeting is a meeting of the board for the purpose of conducting school district business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. If you desire to address the board, the per public participation sheet located on the uh, table uh, at the meeting room entrance and indicate your topic before the start of the meeting. When addressing the board, please identify yourself by name and indicate if you represent a group. An individual's time is li limited to five minutes. I will be keeping time and giving, and giving notice if that limit gets close. Individuals addressing the board should take into consideration the rules of common courtesy. The public participation portion of the meeting cannot be used to make personal attacks against a school board member or school district employee, which are totally unrelated to the manner in which the member or employee performs his or her duties. If the comments constitute a complaint against an employee, the employee must be notified in advance and would have the right to request a closed meeting. The board is not obligated to answer questions or make comments in response to issues raised. In general, such issues will be referred to the superintendent. Okay, great, thank you. So, um, is, and you'll have to help me with this, Mac DePa? DePero. DePero, thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Mac DePero. I live at 3316 IR at Oxford. That's kind of bizarre because I live Lake Orion School District, but I live in Oakland Township. There and you go. Um, both my daughters went to Lake Orion. Both graduated Michigan, uh, Michigan State, PA, and another one, uh, Western Michigan. Loved the school district. Was good friends with Tony Rothschild when he was a superintendent, and Bob worked with Bob Bass and people, and getting uh, Moose Tree Nature Center mm -hmm. started. Disappointed that environmental education got slashed, and Moose Tree got disemboweled, but we have the art center there, and I love the art center people, and I'm there. Uh, my wish goes back, and my envision was 30 years ago of making Lake Orion uh, School District uh, an environmental um, school, where like some schools are business and dance and art and sports. I figured with our school district being emboldened with Bald Mountain State land, Addison Oaks, Orion Oaks, Paint Creek Trail, and all that, um, that we could utilize these resources. As we know, one of the biggest issues facing the future is global warming. You know, I was a volunteer for Clinton River Watershed Council, Michigan Nature Association, and all that kind of stuff. I don't represent nobody but myself. Um, and I'll give you a little history about how the school district got our new high school and how environmental education became prominent with Moose Tree. Uh, 1978, Paul Thompson wrote um, Bald Mountain uh, Reconnaissance Report, which showed that 
right behind the high school is 150 acres of most environmentally sensitive area in southeastern Michigan with 10 ecosystems. Mm -hmm. So when Miss, Mrs. Rothschild called me up and told me that they want to put a, um, a mobile park in this land, 89 acres, I wrote a DNR trust fund grant to preserve the land and um, I got all this jacked up. But anyway, um, <laughs> oh yeah. So I wrote a DNR trust fund grant to preserve that land. Well, that didn't go nowhere. So then I went to Bob Bass. I wrote, I wrote to uh, Mr. Bass about the importance of uh, our area. That Lake Orange School District lies in an area encompassing 70,000 acres, 7,000 acres of state and county land with some of the most diverse forest, wetlands, and open space in southeastern Michigan. 4,600 acres Ball Mountain, 920 Addison Oaks, 793 acres of uh, Addison Oaks. Anyway, on and on, that we could utilize this as for environmentally to teach our kids. I wonder how many kids in fifth grade know some of the common trees or that the Paint Creek goes into the Clinton River that goes into um, Lake Orion or goes into Lake Clair and out to the ocean. You know, how many know that the Clinton River Watershed Council is 740, uh, um, 740 miles? And, and so anyway, I've been really into you know, active in that kind of stuff like 30 years ago. So he sends out Kurt, Kurt Curtis, who was the business manager, to go look at the property. You know, I said, hey, I believe that the Little Cost Lake Guardian School District could create a world-class environmental education program that will gain the school a unique reputation and over time, actually have parents and students want to transfer to Lake Orion for this uniqueness as an environmental education school. This stuff is 1990, for Bass 94 and so when he went and saw it boom they put they they like the land forget the forget the nature center right uh, offers on the table uh, 1.6 million dollars for the property so the school ended up getting the property for the high school you know and then we pushed the environmental stuff with the development of moose tree well, no one really ever followed through and no one took the bull by the horns because I always thought that we could be partnering with Michigan State College of Agricultural and Natural Resources has programs, uh, Sustainable Park Recreation and Tourism, BS. I believe the next movement generation, we had industrial, we had the communication. Okay, but this is for the leisure economy you look at what we've done with the village of Lake Orion now, turn it, I was on an advisory. Your, your time limit has been yeah. reached. Well, um, it also says you could give a little more time if you thought deemed necessary. But Go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah. Anyway, I would like to see a component of environmental education put into the high school curriculum where they have choices to go to uh, Wisconsin or Michigan State. And, 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 and I mean, so many of we are got so many cats, everybody's in the business and everybody worries about their job and career. But if we ain't worried about the planet, <laughs> you know, I don't know what's gonna happen to us. So Ben, maybe I'll talk to you about talking to the curriculum people and see if we can look at incorporating, you know, things like that. Well, thank you for your Great. time. Thank you very thank much. You for thank you, tonight. sir. Very nice. Appreciate it. Very nice. That was a little piece of history. A lot of history. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. All right. So we'll move to recap and next steps. And Ben. <laughs> I didn't I didn't catch anything as far as uh, um, follow-up items. No. Unless you had any. I did not. All right. All not right. that I can Good. think of. We I think it's Monday. Monday we have another meeting. Right. You know, that we'll would be, be one thing that's on your radar, but yep. And I've uh, either gotten or spoken to everybody who uh, is going to be sending me that information. I appreciate that. We'll get that together. We'll get back out the uh, the copy uh, with it compiled so you can review it. All right. All right. So we'll move to uh, closing comments. And John, please. Uh, nothing further. All right, Heidi. Just to thank you again to the high school leadership. They did an awesome job Great on job. homecoming. So thank you.
appreciate the time. Flawless. Yes, it was very good. And um, thank you to, to Julie and the board members for the lamp of learning and just keeping that uh, going. And, and Julie does a great job of organizing it and making it um, simple for all of us. So uh, thank you for that. And um, like Heidi said, leadership was great. Blanche Sims, uh, was, it was awesome to see them. And I'm really glad that we have those uh, school showcases. They uh, both have done uh, just, a, just a great job and helps us understand why we do the work we do. So thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Steve. Just a big thank you to our public speaker tonight. A breath of fresh air to hear somebody nice come to the podium. Thank you, sir, for being here. Thank you. Susan? Yeah, just I want to echo, I'm sure, everyone, uh, the leadership class. There is hours and hours that go in behind the scenes to make sure homecoming goes off without a hitch, and they clearly are doing a great job. So appreciate all that. And, of course, Blanche Sims as well. That was our first showcase, as Ben pointed out, and they definitely set the bar really high. Thank you. Scott? Uh, I'm going to say the same thing, so nothing for <laughs> right. yeah. right, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Danielle. Ditto, and, and an extra thank you to uh, Mr. Myers for his extreme generosity. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Jake? Yeah, thank you to uh, Tim Myers and the Arconic Foundation for what they did. And I want to echo what the, the leadership, I've been going to Lake Orion High School football games for 40 years, and I've never seen a student section that had the energy, and it wasn't even close. Those students... <sighs> It was a, it was amazing the environment that was at the stadium and you know the team almost pulled it out almost. and I yeah. mean the energy from the crowd had to be a big part of that so uh, kudos to the current L LOHS students for the environment that they created. Thank you, Jake. Fergus. So yeah, I, I homecoming was amazing. The leadership class was amazing, but I also want to give a shout out to our staff because it's a huge week for them to put in all their extra time that they do for the students and for the high school was also parent teacher conferences. And so it's been an, a busy week for that. And you know, they're involved with the football game and monitoring students and, and going to the parades and going to the dance. And I, it's, I just appreciate all that our staff also does in that. So thank you. And um, shout out to Blanche Sims. We, we can't wait to see more kids at future meetings. Absolutely, thank you. And uh, um, through the years, I rarely miss a uh, lamp of learning. And unfortunately this year I could not be there. And uh, I just wanted to extend my congratulations to those students and uh, also to their families for their academic success. That is a very important program in uh, Lake Orion schools, and it's been a long-standing program, and uh, it's one that we need to be proud of and of those students. On that note, we are adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.